Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. My name's Simon and I'm very happy you've joined me. Today I've got something a bit special from my childhood. Blood Bowl, second season edition. I've been playing Blood Bowl for a very long time, both tabletop board game and computer game, and I absolutely love it. In this edition we've got new teams, new rules, a lovely looking rule book, and it looks absolutely awesome. So come in and let me take you on a guided tour. Is that a bit creepy? Probably. Blood Bowl is one of my favourite games ever and I think I've had every edition so far. My brother and I used to play first edition and that included cardboard miniatures in the box. We slaughter base stands with the uh, cardboard cutouts on top of them. Pretty crappy by today's standards but we thought it was brilliant. I had second edition which had the polystyrene pitch. It wasn't great as a playing surface, it was too uneven and bits broke off it and it just generally wasn't a good surface, but I still loved that edition. And so on and so forth until Games Workshop basically relegated it to the basement. So as you can imagine, I was absolutely delighted when they announced 5th edition a few years ago. The minis in that were absolutely outstanding. I actually invested in a lot of Forge World stuff, but being me, didn't really get around to painting much of it. That is all going to change with this edition which is Blood Bowl, second season edition. And as you can see, two new teams. We've got Imperial Nobility and Black Orcs. This should be absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to show you the box first of all. I don't know if you can see that. There's a Blood Bowl hologram. I like that. And on the back, you can see we've got the two big guys. We've got the Imperial Nobility Ogre and the Trained Troll. We've got Griff Oberwald, who, as far as I can tell, has been around since day one. And Varag Gultur, and same for him. And we've got the Imperial Nobility Lineman and a Bodyguard. Um, I don't know what he'll count as, maybe a, bl a Blitzer. And... We have got a Black Orc and a Goblin Bruiser. And I really love this edition. It's um, Blood Bowl referees. So there's, there's a Dwarf and an Elf. And if you look over here, it says two plastic biased referees, one Dwarf and one Elf. So I wonder who's biased towards who. So I'm going to open it up and we can see how it goes together. I've already noticed glue required, so these aren't push fit models. Right, so here we have the plastics. We've got the red plastics for the Imperial Nobility. So we've got two large sprues and two small ones. I take it that's Griff Oberwald and that's the Ogre. And we have. Varag Gultur and we have the Troll. There may actually be two sprues for the, the Troll and for Varag Gultur for that matter. So two big sprues for the Black Orcs as well. So that's a combination of Black Orcs and a few wee goblins. And we've got a blue sprue for the referees. So here we've got a bunch of counters. Now I'm definitely going to make my own uh, scoreboards and things like that for this. I've got a few ideas and I'm hoping it'll make a good video. As expected from Games Workshop these days, these minis are absolutely stunning. I love the two referees. The dwarf one has a huge book on his back and he's blowing his whistle. He's got a lot of character to him. And we've got the elf who is giving someone a card. I don't know if I'll make that a yellow card or a red card. Probably a red. Now on to the two teams. All the minis are really well sculpted but I have to say there's a clear winner in my eyes. The orc ones are much better than the human ones in this case and I shall explain why. Varag Gultur is probably the best Blood Bowl miniature that's ever been created. As for the troll, I know he's been around for a long time but he's still got the capability to throw a goblin into the end zone with the ball and that's just brilliant and I love his pose, he's winding up for a big long bomb with the goblin in his hand. 
it's brilliant. Uh, also, the reason I like the orcs better is that although the base models are the same, there's different heads for each one, so none of the orcs are the same as each other, or the goblins for that matter, whereas the humans are all paired up. It's uh, two of the same, with no other options available. So I didn't really like that. As for Griff Overworld, although it's a lovely sculpt, I don't like the miniature for Blood Bowl. It, it just doesn't look like he's ready for a game of Blood Bowl. Um, it's, it's the bird. The bird just makes it look silly in my opinion. It's just, it's not for me that one. I'm actually considering digging out my old Forge World uh, Griff and using him instead. The Imperial Nobility guys look really good as well. I will enjoy painting them, but it's just they don't hold a candle to the orcs in this case. There's a lot of detail on them, but I'm just not a fan of the aesthetic. The ogre is still as cool as ever, absolutely love that miniature. And there's a woman in the team as well, so that should please a lot of people. That's it for the minis. I'm going to do a deeper dive in the future with these guys because I think they deserve it. Here we've got the divider to stop the rulebook getting poked by the sprues. So just the same as the box art. And that's nice. On the other side we've got all the teams that are available. The ones that I've got, I've got a dwarf team. I have got a human team and an orc team, obviously from the last edition. So there's a lot more to collect. I would love to start up a Blood Bowl League, but as you can imagine, it is the worst time to even think about doing that. Here we've got the rule book. It's a big thick one. That's lovely. Hardback one. The official rules. I love it. In fact, let's just open that right now. So we've got the Blood Bowl rules and we have cheat sheets, which is very handy. So there you go, the whole sequence of actions and everything to do with that. I'm wondering if my wife will play me at this, maybe it's a bit too, too much to ask. So we've got the rule book, still got a few dents and dings in it from the sprues, but nothing I can't live with. So let's open the rule book and see what it's like. A wee intro from the commentators. These guys have been in it as long as I can remember. Um, and then we've got an intro into the game of Blood Bowl. So I don't know how many times I've read this story. Monk, the leader of a small band of orcs, stumbled upon a tomb that was filled with a lot of armour and other things. I just love the writing in this. Here's a, a section of it. Monk, who would have been in serious trouble with the washerwoman had he been wearing any form of underwear, gazed goggle-eyed into the glittering hall now revealed. Strange armour adorned the walls, peculiar mosaics lined the floor, and, at its centre, on a great bejeweled pedestal, sat an enormous book. It's just all very humorous. I like the, the light-hearted aspect of Blood Bowl. It's not all serious like Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40k. So everyone started pouring into the tomb from both sides of the battle that was going on, and they found a book on an altar. No one could read it, so they sent out for someone to translate it. So eventually they found a half-blind dwarf who could read both languages. So eventually he came out the tomb and declared that the book was dedicated to the lost god Nuffle. Do we know any sporting organisations that sound similar? It took me a long time to get that one, actually. So the book explains all about Blood Bowl, the amount of people that could be on the field at once, how you score, all that kind of thing. Nuffle's sacred number was 11. Only 11 warriors from each sect could be on the field of battle at one time. So instead of continuing their battle, the orcs and dwarves decided to field a team each, and the winner of that would win the battle. Everyone seemed to like that idea, and so it was that in the, f the first time in many centuries, Nuffle's Amorical Football, as the game was called, was played in the Old World, with an inflated pig's bladder, much to the pig's consternation. The first game was played with no pitch, no pitch markings, and it was basically just a free-for-all. In this first game they still used axes and things, so it was basically just a bloodbath. The people who remained to sweep up the mess of the battlefield made a startling discovery. Underneath all the blood and gore and mud and everything, it was what we now know as a blood bowl pitch. 
So the door seer who had adopted the name of Sacred Commissioner Rose L, after a priest of high standing mentioned in the book, offered a prayer to Nuffle and began to organise and lay plans for the future. And that is how Blood Bowl came about. It's obviously evolved over the years into the real set that we know today, so I'm not going to go into all that. It's very cool, I love the story, and it really sets the scene for the game. So there's loads and loads to read. So we've got the rules, and we've got about drafting a team, which is very interesting. Obviously the big draw in Blood Bowl is getting a team and building it up, and they learn new skills as they go along. You need a league for that, and it's just brilliant fun when you get one going. One of my favourite ever things in Blood Bowl was throwing other players. So the big guy can toss a little guy, and then the little guy can just run into the end zone with the ball. It's absolutely brilliant. When it comes off, it's amazing. There are so many styles of play in Blood Bowl. You could have the meat grinder, which is hit the other team until there's not enough players to stop you scoring touchdowns. There's the elven way of playing, which is passing and running. There's like Skaven can play a, a good running game. Undead, it's a war of attrition. Both in real life Blood Bowl and the computer games, I tended to run the war of attrition. I tended to try to injure as many people as possible and then saunter into the end zone. This obviously doesn't work when you come up against a, a really tough team. It only works against the weaklings and the body count will soon rack up. And it's a really fun way to play. It can go wrong very quickly though, don't get me wrong. So this is a bit I wanted to see Blood Bowl teams. I really want to work out what paint scheme I'm going to do for these guys. So there's the Thunder Valley Greenskins. So that's the Black Orc team, Chaos Chosen team, the Doom Lords, Chaos Renegade team, the Mongrel Horde, Dark Elf teams, this one's the Nagaroth Nightwings, Dwarf Giants, Elfheim Eagles, I like them. The Goblin teams, who traditionally don't do very well, are the Scarcrag Snivellers, that's the most famous one of them. Halfling teams, who I don't know if they've ever won a game, and the most famous one of them is the Greenfield Grasshuggers. Human teams, the Reichland Reavers, are the most popular one. My team from the last edition was called the Mamie Dolphins, and they had the turquoise scheme. Although, in typical half-done fashion, they didn't get finished. They might this time around, though. The Imperial Nobility team is the Bogenhafen Barons. I would really like to see more colour schemes for uh, the nobility teams, because I don't really want to paint the standard one. Lizardmen, Guacamole Crater Gators, that's cool. Necromantic ones are the Wolfenburg Crypt Stealers, so we've got werewolves, zombies, ghouls, flesh golems. That's excellent. A Nurgle team, I'll steer clear of them. So it's just rotten guys, and a pestigore, and a bloater. Ogre teams, the Fire Mountain Gutbusters, those look really cool. Orc team, the Gouge Die, of course, where Varag Gulture used to play. Shambling Undead, so Skeletons and Mummies, and the Champions of Death are the famous ones. Skaven teams, Skaven Blight Scam Scramblers. Snotlings are the Mighty Crud, Mighty Crud Creek Nose Pickers. Underworld teams, the Underworld Creepers. So Goblin Skaven and that's about it. And Wood Elf teams, the Athalorn Avengers are the famous one. And they'll play a passing game. So we've got lots of star players. Here's Deep Root Strong Branch, who's a tree man. Eldril Sidewinder. I won't go through all of these. I'll pick out my favourites. Grack, he's one of my favourites. Valen Swift, Lucian Swift, and Morgan Thorg, and the Mighty Zug, of course. I've got these guys, I've just not painted them up. So that's the book. It's a hefty tome. There's lots in it, lots to read on the background and things like that. I'm very excited for that. Um, got our slaughter bases. 32 mil, I think, and we've got the board, which I'll just open. So there are the dugouts. So you move your people in here, in here, in here, that kind of thing when they get injured. 
and then when they go in here they're available to go back on the pitch just standard blood bowl so we've got a big foldy out pitch really high quality right i've used the ultra wide lens and i think i've got the whole thing in so you can see the detail on it looks awesome got the two end zones and you get various bits and pieces lying on the pitch we've got a trap door here and here i'll have to read the rules to see if you can go down that got a squashed goblin we've got lots of blood stains we've got the skulls in the middle these remind me of my polystyrene pitch which had these raised up actually quite difficult to stand people on and We'll see if I can do this without making a mess. There we go, it's double sided. So that's cool. The grates have changed. A few less blood stains. There's a bottle there. Some boots and shoulder pads and things like that. So these are really nicely done. It'll add a bit of variety to your games. I think I'll use the green side though, a bit more traditional. So here we've got transfers. I will use them for the shoulder pads, they really help. So we've got a full, full two squads of transfers. We've got the instructions, which aren't very detailed because they don't have to be. So you can see how to put everything together. So we've got two bags of dice, green ones and red ones. We've got D16 and a D8 in there, which I think are new. I can't honestly remember. So I'll have to read the rules and then see, see what they're for. So that's Blood Bowl 2nd Season Edition, absolutely fantastic, lovely looking miniatures, two big guys, two star players, what more could you ask for? Um, I'm really going to enjoy getting my teeth into this and playing it. Like I say, I would love to start a Blood Bowl League, but in the current Covid world, it's not really possible, so I'll have to resign myself to playing with my wife. Well, that sounded so wrong. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and if you've got any memories to share of any uh, standout Blood Bowl games you've had or any great victories or just any good memories, share them in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.